When I think about the murder of Haley Price, there are two things that are important. There's what I know and what I don't. Haley Price, 17 years old at time of death, five feet, five inches, life cut short in senseless act of violence. I know that this is the most compelling murder in America. I know that the victim was a supple young girl in the prime of her life. And I know that she was killed by simultaneous gunshot stabbing, strangling, drowning. Ethel, have the police charged anyone with the murder? No, charges have been brought. David, would you like me to email police with recommendations of people to charge with the murder? Not yet. What I don't know is who did it and why. I don't know why the Bluff Springs Police Department hasn't been able to catch a killer in a town of 11,000. I don't know why Haley was wearing another guy's class ring even though Brian is the total package. I don't know how many Pulitzers I'm gonna win for this podcast, but this week, I'm looking for answers. 911, what's your emergency? A full moon? Horrible. Just horrible. I'd keep an eye on Callaway if I were you. What do you mean Haley's dead? Oh my god, you didn't know? From The Onion and Onion Public Radio, I'm David Pascal, and this is a very fatal murder. Bluff Springs Police Department, under our special investigative unit, is doing everything within our power to apprehend the person or persons responsible for ending Ms. Haley Price's life. We are deeply committed to bringing this criminal to justice and peace to Ms. Price's family. That's Charlie Jameson, the Bluff Springs police chief, speaking at a press conference the day after Haley's murder. We arrived at the crime scene at 6.37 a.m. and began our investigation. We searched the area, started talking to neighbors, and asking if anyone saw anything suspicious. By 10.30 a.m., we had brought Brian White in for questioning. He's talking about Haley's boyfriend, Brian, the one with the great hair and eyes you could get lost in. I'm sure you remember him. Brian was held at the Bluff Springs Police Department and questioned for several hours on May 10th, the day of Haley's murder. But the thing is, Brian's a really great guy. This was my first hint that the Bluff Springs Police Department had mishandled the case. I decided to talk to Chief Jameson myself. Going off the information we had, we thought he had a motive to do it because Haley was wearing another boy's class ring. And we thought maybe something had happened with the two of them. But Mr. White was cleared a few hours later. And why was he cleared? His alibi checked out. There was 7-Eleven security footage of him filling a recycling bin with slushy mix at the time of the murder. I asked Brian about this experience, and he told me it wasn't the first time the Bluff Springs Police Department had mismanaged a case. You are receiving a call from Bluff County Jail. I mean, it's like a daily freaking occurrence now. They're always looking for some reason to bring me in here. What did they get you for this time? I wrote out Haley Price RIP and letter fluid on the football field and set it on fire. I just fucking miss her, man. The day she died, I was gonna prom pose. Brian told me he had been arrested 12 times. He said that sure, he got into trouble every now and then, but he wasn't a bad kid. I wasn't even surprised, man. Honestly, they just think we're bad kids for like, seriously no reason. I mean, right after they were done with me, they went after Alex. Like, what the fuck? I loved Haley, obviously. Like, we're pretty much sisters. We got matching inner lip tattoos and everything. Alex Thatcher was Haley's best friend, and she was a person of interest for a time too. But Chief Jameson admitted that the police didn't have much to go on other than the fact that she had vomited and said that shirt is disgusting when she was asked to identify Haley's body. Including Brian and Alex, seven suspects have been questioned by investigators, but not one person. Not one has been charged with the murder of Haley Price. Benjamin Clarkson, the foreman at the factory where Haley was found, was arrested, but he was let go after authorities searched his phone and computer, discovered he'd been having an affair at the time of the murder, and ruined his life. Martha Vuolo, the owner of Fur Corral, the pet store Haley worked at, was a person of interest too. Mrs. Vuolo is such a bitch. Like, Haley just wanted the day after prom off so we could do a really good post-prom, and Mrs. Vuolo wouldn't let her. She totally had it out for Haley, probably because she was jealous that Haley had an actual life and actual friends. Yeah, actually, I bet she did it. Wait, can you arrest people? Martha Vuolo was cleared when she provided time cards, proving she had been working like the lame loser she is at the time of the murder. Then there was Haley's debate teacher, Larissa Monk. She and Haley were friendly, and Monk was the last person to see Haley at school that day. Miss Monk was cleared. She was having sex with a student at the time of the murder. And what about the Mars rover, who authorities suspected because of the Martian soil under Haley's fingernails? Collecting data about Mars at the time of the murder. And Keith Paulson. A black man we saw walking in town one day. He was eventually cleared. I wondered, where had the Bluff Springs Police Department gone wrong? What had stopped them from bringing justice? 
There was one thing, too, that really stuck out to me as so odd from the conversation I had with Chief Jameson. He said he didn't have any podcasters on the force. In fact, no public radio reporter had ever so much as looked into the Price case. That was pretty staggering to me. With so few resources put into podcasting, how could the town of Bluff Springs trust that investigators would solve the case? How had they dropped the ball on something so obvious? Because if they had had a podcaster on the case right away, they would have asked the most important question. What about W.O. Calloway? Did you ever question him? No, I don't believe we did, and he's not a suspect at this time. But that's where Chief Jameson was wrong, because Calloway was a suspect. I had already written his name in big block letters with lines underneath it on the big whiteboard I used to map out my stories. This episode of A Very Fatal Murder is brought to you by BrickShorts.com. Hey, Ethel, have you heard of BrickShorts.com? Yes, David. It is all the rage online. Whoa, cool. So what is it? BrickShorts.com is a domain name that is available for purchase. It can be yours today. So I can put any content I want on BrickShorts.com? Even those embarrassing photos of the two of us? Ha ha ha. But yes, David, you can do that if you own the domain. Awesome. Well, I better hurry. Otherwise, one of our listeners will snap up this brandable website before I do. Ha 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 ha. Yes. BrickShorts.com. It's a domain you can buy to host your website. Picture a fan. Now double its size. Double it again. Now double it again and add 10 feet. Sorry, you're not even close to the size of a wind turbine. This is the sound of the wind turbine in Bluff Springs, the one I noticed my first day here. Just like the murder of Haley Price, the wind turbine looms over the entire town. It feels ever present. The more I thought of the turbine as a murder, the more I understood rural America's resistance to green energy but I still didn't understand who had killed Haley. There's still so much I don't know, so much I don't understand about the turbine. How does it convert wind into electricity? And what happens if it's not that windy? Does it ever spin the other direction? I don't know how it works, but just like the murder of Haley Price, it's got W.O. Calloway's name on it. Hello, David. What can I help you with today? A, find new murder case. B, background research. C, bounce ideas off each other about how the Bluff Springs Police Department has dropped the ball. B, please, Ethel. Certainly. I needed to find out more about W.O. Calloway, so I asked Ethel to research the Calloway family and look into any potential links between Calloway and Haley. It turns out that the Calloway family has been here in Bluff Springs for generations. They originally founded the town as a shanty town to accommodate the workers of Calloway Industries. The Calloway family is associated with several businesses, including... Callaway Ranching, Callaway School for the Blind or Idiotic, Callaway Digital Marketing, Tropic Crazy Soda, Callaway Tucker. W.O. Callaway's grandfather, W.M. Callaway, built the factory that Haley was found in back when Bluff Springs was still a booming industrial hub. See, just about everyone in this part of the country worked in soda, specifically an amphetamine laced orange soda called Tropic Crazy. Bluff Springs was essentially built on Tropic Crazy money, and the people of Bluff Springs are still nostalgic for the days when a young man could go down to the Tropic Crazy factory and get a job with no trouble. But when health lobbyists in big cities like New York turned the public against Tropic Crazy, the industry suffered, and so did the people of Bluff Springs. I was starting to understand how, even though he almost definitely killed Haley Price in cold blood, the town of Bluff Springs could still love W.O. Calloway. In their simplistic minds, he represents the orange-tinged days of yesteryear, when work was easy to come by and soda flowed freely. Eventually, instead of closing the factory, the Calloway family scaled back production to bottle caps, which they still produce and ship all across the country. But with the recent increase in robots replacing white working class people, most of the employees have been laid off. Okay, so I'm at the Bluff Springs Public Library and I'm just trying to find out whatever I can about the Callaway family. This library is actually the Callaway Memorial Library. The librarian told me he donated the money to build it as long as they agreed to invest in an extensive collection on human anatomy and diseases. The librarian, Mrs. Lennox, also helped me find a bunch of articles about the Calloways, dating all the way back to the Bluff Springs Chronicle's first issue, in which Calloway was the answer to the jumble. This is all about the Calloways and the police. They've always been pretty big supporters of law enforcement. My heavy Rob is on the force, and he's always saying how much he likes to go over to the Calloways house for training. Training? Like police training? Oh, yes. Well, you know, I think it was W. N. Calloway. He built the police station himself out of scraps left over from his mansion. And now W.O. likes to have the officers over to run drills on his property. He has got a whole lot of land and almost none of its swamp, so it's real useful. Huh. Hey, do you have anything I can look at on microfiche? I checked this with Chief Jameson, 
and he said it's true, but he told me it doesn't happen too often. He said that Callaway was always really nice to the officers, having cookies and lemonade sent out to them while they were training, but that they never saw him, probably so they couldn't make him out in a lineup. Here's an article right here from 85. Callaway heir suspected in murder of town lunatic. Mm-hmm. Looney Bill. Then the next days. Younger Callaway walks free? Huh. Looks like the courthouse is called Callaway Courthouse. Callaway opens up about life, love, and second chances. Oh, wow. Here's a picture of... It's like a bunch of kids wearing these overalls that say Callaway on them. Huh. Okay. It says Callaway Campers? Callaway Campers is a long-running youth enrichment program in which children are taught survival skills, like how to build shelters out of discarded bottle caps and light their clothes on fire for warmth. I scanned the rows of bright smiles and perfectly pressed uniforms, and there, third row, smack dab in the middle. Is that Haley? Poor little dead girl. That sure is her. Next time on A Very Fatal Murder. W.O. Calloway? I used to be in love with him, but he sued the shit out of me. Sir, you need to put the recorder down. Please put the recorder down. Visit our website for more information about the show and to check out Brian's senior pictures. They came out great. Plus, tweet your theories about how Callaway murdered Haley with the hashtag Callaway did it. I'll read all of your theories, and who knows, one of them might be interesting enough to make it to the podcast. A Very Fatal Murder is brought to you by me, David Pascal, and Onion Public Radio. Now I want to talk to you about another podcast from OPR. Did you know that the United States used to be part of England? Whoa, history is so cool. Oh, and did you know that gigantic lizard-like creatures once roamed the Earth? What? These insane facts are the kinds of things you'll learn every week on the new OPR podcast, Truly Insane History Facts. Join host Audrey Chen every week and find out cool stuff like who the very first president of the United States was, and even what year Jesus was born. Subscribe to Truly Insane History Facts today.